Hey, how are you? I'm good. We are, we're twinning. I know. <laughs> I like, oh, it's the easy hair day. <laughs> I know. I know. And I, I color, you color coordinate with your, with your backdrop and I'm yeah. like with you. It's like we planned this. Who knew? We got this big, big, ugly yellow wall in my room, which I'm like, man, I need to, this is too bright. <laughs> no, I love it. No, a splash of color. I, I used to watch all those design shows and they always yeah. talk about the, the, the one wall that should be a different color. So, yeah. yeah. I like yellow. It's just, it's sort of happy. Like I'm affected by all that stuff. So I like to, I need to have color and, you know, yeah. feel good. Kind sure. of <laughs> well, especially right now. So let me just introduce you because I know that we just started and just went on. So um, Keely, uh, and I know that you, you were saying nobody, you know, a lot of people just recognize you by your street name, which is Lock and Key. Um, yes. But I have no idea how to pronounce your last name. Oh yeah, nobody does. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only people from Fiji know how. It's um Kaukimo they. So like the C is like a T H. Yeah. So nobody would ever get that, right? So like, yeah. Yeah. So it's cow like a cow. Uh -huh. Key like a key. So Kauki Mo. Kaukimo they. They. Okay. Yeah. Kaukimo they. Yeah. Kaukimo they. Okay. <laughs> Hey. So, okay, so <laughs> for everybody just um, tuning in, because this is going to be on a few different platforms, we are, um, you know, talking about the online shift in dance and also just how people are staying connected online. And um, I know that with um, some of the things that I've seen on your profile for Instagram, um, you've been staying connected, number one, just with your family. I've seen all of like your wonderful, you know, family pics, with you, which you've talked about, like the challenges of teaching your kids at home and, and not being in school and also, um, dancing in, I, I'm assuming it's in, in church or virtual, um, faith sessions. Is that right? Um, I, that was one, wait, I, so I did. <laughs> I did a class for, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Project Dance. Have you heard of that? Project Dance? No. Project Dance? Um, no. Yeah, it's, it's she, uh, Cheryl Cutlip I, I started it, and um, it goes mm -hmm. to different countries. I think, I think they're still going to France, even though everything's going on. I think that France actually invited them to come over, even despite everything that's going on, which is interesting. But um, <clears throat> they do outreaches. It's really uplifting. Like, they'll just go into the middle of a square somewhere, a stage mm -hmm. is lifted and they have all kinds of outreach just to put a smile on people's face, like dance numbers. It's really awesome. So I did um, her summer uh, workshop and then I did Word in Motions. They do a festival every single year. It's really awesome. Um, but this is our first virtual one. So I yeah. did that. <laughs> and um, I was also teaching for Steezy Studios. I did a couple of classes for Steezy, which there's no, you know, interaction. You're just being right. filled front of a mirror with a camera so so yeah, yeah that's all I've really done now I did one for um actually Joanne Pasusit she's in Canada in Vancouver mm -hmm. um she has street groove I'm not I think it was just a master class kind of they were doing a special class so that's all I've done so far yeah well that's a lot considering yeah. a lot of people are just you know just trying to take it all in um so when you are, I mean, you kind of went through a few different things, like a festival, a master class, and on demand. Like you've kind of just covered everything. Um, yeah. So um, you have credits that are, you know, spanning a lot from film to TV. You know, Honey and or is Honey Tour. You know, <laughs> and and Missy Elliott videos and and Beat Freaks and you know just so much that you know you've kind of just done it all. The virtual teaching is something that I don't know how much you've done of that, but how does it like rank in like what you've been doing or how you feel about it? Like, I just ask everybody, what do you think about it? Is it here to stay? Is it something you're going to like do forever? <laughs> Are you just like out of here when we all get back in the studio? Like what's your, what's your take? Well, um, it really, I think as far as the teacher experience, mm -hmm. it, um, it depends on the students and how much they give back to you because you are, you know how that is in the class already. So yeah. when you're separated by this, you know, by the internet <laughs> or by the whatever, you know, right. separated, um, that really matters. So like, I would say, I'm not, I'm not going to point out which ones, but like, um, well, one of the classes was with students was challenging because I felt like they weren't really, sure how much to give back as far as uh, 
respond and answer you know what i mean like yeah. questions um so and then sometimes there's a delay on the internet depending on you know where you're at so that can be a little weird too as far as trying to make sure they're listening to the music you can't really count them in because they have to be able to catch the count in on their own especially if there's a delay so yeah. but i the class that i just did for word in motion that one was i feel like i'm lopsided let me <laughs> i'm like floor it has to be like <laughs> um the that class was really amazing because we did a, a, a like old school party dances uh which is basically old school hip hop you know um and there were other teachers there so we just created the atmosphere of like you would when you're naturally doing that art form you know that style of dance um and for me that made a hundred percent difference to have them around me to show the kids like the interaction and the exchange between people so that just goes back to having real live human beings around you you know so right. but like that class was a success um i'm learning i'm trying to learn how to take groups or even specific uh kids just like you would you know in a class and you have your groups and you showcase the group right. i'm trying to learn how to do that in the zoom setting mm -hmm. where you pull out specific kids and let them be highlighted and, you know and so that was fun like that i feel like i kind of got a little bit more of a flow by the time mm -hmm. i did that class mm -hmm. um but i really feel like it's just like anything else like the energy that's coming back at you you gotta you kind of have to pull yourself up regardless and try to pull them up but i feel like it's a little more challenging with this whole virtual thing you know and and i would be lying if i didn't say i was concerned like if if uh i feel like it's really hard to teach kids to dance on beat, you know, on <laughs> you know? Yeah. that, that part is challenging to me. I, I, I feel like, like, even with my kids, I've hesitated in putting them in, in any dance them stuff just because mm -hmm. they're not in class a lot already. So I'm not sure that I want them to start off that way. It's a yeah. good way to keep them active. Right. Um, but I'm such a stickler as a dancer that I'm like, I'm already really picky, even here in Los Angeles, you know, <laughs> like, so, you know, that's... <laughs> well, you know, they have your DNA, so they already have yeah. the rhythm, like, within. <laughs> even if they're not counted in, they have some sort of, right? Um, yeah. Well, so, when you're thinking about, um, you know, next steps, like, I know that, you know, there have been people who have told me um, in the last few interviews that I've done that they're not doing Zoom. Like Rudy Smith, I just talked to him yesterday. He said, ah, I'm not on Zoom. I decided I was going to, you know, create a class and then put it on IG Live and put a private page together and then give people the link and do that whole thing. And then, I mean, it sounds very complicated and... No, I just forgot. I taught a whole locking thing too. So that you just made there me remember because <laughs> that's, that's what they did. They did like yeah. a program. It was that was so. So the positive thing to me about it is that you're reaching people that you would probably not reach. Like she wanted to reach out to Argentinian kids, for, like and uh, a lot of them aren't able to come to the states, and and for some reason a lot of people have not brought teachers out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that was awesome because she felt like she could expose her kids to a lot of people that would not otherwise be able to go there. So that's the positive, you know. Um, but yeah, she put together a private Instagram. You had mm -hmm. to sign up, and then she gave you the, you know, granted your request. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that was smart. But I don't blame him. Like, I, yeah. You know, I don't know if I, I know some people will continue this. Like at the festival I just did, they said they'll they if they're allowed, they're going to do the in house, but mm -hmm. they're also going to do a virtual for people who can't. I feel like that's tricky because if you offer people a Zoom plus being in-house they may just buy for the zoom because it's cheaper so uh i don't know <laughs> i don't know either and it's that's why i'm talking all you know talking to you talking to everybody just trying to figure out like what is what what is what, what are we doing right now you know i mean obviously there's a whole much larger issue as to why we're all at home um and so you know i feel like the shift is just you know a conversation that we're opening the door to say like is this really what we want? Like, or are we, I know you're like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I don't. Yeah. You're right. Well, so, and when you were talking to, you know, people who are, cause I am not a locker. 
I yeah. can't fake it till I make it, right? <laughs> like, it ain't, yeah. Um, but I don't even put it like on special skills, like it is not happening. Yeah. Um, but if it's in a choreographed routine, you know, just throw in a little, yeah. right? Um, but for a lot of people, what you do is very specialized, right? And so, you know, I was reading over your bio and like you, like the first, I think first female student of like Don Campbell Block, like just like, as far as like your intro to that, um, and you can talk about it more because I know I just really am glossing over, but I feel like you have so much um, knowledge that may not even be just in the dance moves, right? And that probably transitions over to like all of what we're talking about right now in social justice uprising and movements and things like that. So have you fe felt like you've connected with people in the online space in more than just being home with the pandemic, but also with all the rest that's going on. Um, yeah, let me just go back and say I was yeah. the first female student of Greg Camelot Jr. So he's okay. like, and I just want to make sure I say that. Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, yeah, the cool thing is, is that like, like what we're doing, like we're getting to mm -hmm. interview and stuff like I don't think people use this platform the way they're using it now in that sense of like being able to get to know each other more or like mm -hmm. give detailed information. Like I, I made sure I got on Monsell's four week um, class. I don't know if you knew about Monsell Durden, but he did a four week mm -hmm. class called Intangible Roots, which mm -hmm. goes back. It's it's uh, intangible roots to show how um, the roots of hip hop goes all the way back to African culture and like, and beyond and stuff that you can't even trace, you know? So um, that was really awesome to have that. And I feel like even for him, I think it's going to open up a whole nother world of like ideas because I feel like he's such a treasure trove of knowledge, you know, that mm -hmm. like, I feel like he should do full on eight week summer courses in, you know, where people can show up wherever he wants to do it, you know, um, to expand on that. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I did some interviews. I did some interviews for this guy named Mikey Ice, mm -hmm. who he also, he's got a really great page. He's got two pages, but um, one of his pages has footage, like B-boy footage from way back, like all kinds of special footage, you know? And so he's doing interviews with all of these people. Mm -hmm. So I got to do some interviews with him. And then watching the interviews, being able to connect with other women, that because he's also trying to find a lot of women from hip hop too. So um, those kinds of things, I think we're going to use more of, and it's it has been allowing us to connect in a way, in a more intimate way. So I feel like that's the positive. Like I feel like social media can be used for so many, so many positive things, but in a lot of ways, it's not as well. So that's the tricky balance, you know, um, and yeah so i've i've been kind of hit or miss i've been like i need to take a break yeah. <laughs> i'll come back you know when i know that i'm not gonna say nothing crazy you know? <laughs> so you know it, yeah. it's just it, yeah it's it can also be a sounding board for uh just like i said it can be love or hate just like anything you know yeah. so it depends on how we decide to use it but yeah i feel like it can be such a great place for learning and expanding our knowledge. If we, if there's so many things out there now, there's all these free workouts, free history lessons, free, you know. Like, yes, kids there's easy. so much going on. Like it's almost yeah. too much. And that's like when you said sometimes you take a break, like I, sometimes I do too, because you, there's an overload of information and you're kind of like parsing out the sources, like, yeah, that's a little sketch. Uh, you know what I mean? Just to try and make sure that you're getting the right you know, kind of information instead of something that's going to set you back and be like, I didn't know that wasn't true. Um, because there's, there's fake memes out there, just like there's, you know, funny ones. Yeah. Um, but when you're looking at like, I, I went a long time ago, I went to um, Red Bull BC one in Japan. And this was like way back. And you know, so there's, there's things like that, that I feel like the atmosphere is like just fire, right. And so how how do you foresee, and this is, you can just make it up. I don't know if you like have thought about this any, but how do you see things like that? You know, obviously the class situation, you know, you have people, you know, doing cypher circles and, you know, doing that whole thing. But when you have a massive event like that, that you can't just throw it into an internet bubble, you know what I mean? Like, how do you translate 
what you would want someone to get out of like a serious like like these people are battling like serious competition and yeah at the end of the day they're friends and you know they want everybody to do well but there's some serious like atmospheric stuff that you can't replicate online so do you just say keep it that way and we're never going to come and like even try to mess with that kind of like uh, an atmosphere or are we going to like try to virtualize things like that <laughs> um you know what i feel like i think really no there uh, to me in my opinion you could never you can never 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 fabricate that like you know that kind of energy like people being together I, it's the way god created us he's not he didn't create us to be like you know over the internet and all stuff <laughs> so i just feel like i mean i what i hope happens is that once we have the go ahead <clears throat> that all of us will take um make more of an effort to actually be in the room with each other that's what i think i think what's going to happen is there's gonna be an explosion of more people in the room more people actually in class more people at these events because sometimes we take all those things for granted you know i mean people who are passionate about it are going to show up regardless but i feel like it's going to make people realize what they've been missing out on mm -hmm. you know there's absolutely no i mean i judged a little battle like it wasn't serious but it was a battle and it was like the way the zoom was streaming was offbeat so when they were dancing you couldn't even see them breaking down the musicality of the song because you're and so you're trying to make sure you're interpreting what they're doing but it's really offbeat you know so from what you're seeing so it's like even that part of it it's like it takes the magic a little bit out of what they're doing because you're trying to interpret it and um so no i hope my hope is that uh this will be quickly resolved and that we will get back to being in the room together i don't think you could ever i mean no i mean like even all these <laughs> dances are are birthed out of being together in an organic like house parties street parties club parties you know like school parties you know like <laughs> it's all birthed out of being together so um you know i don't think i don't think it'll ever it would ever be the same like this like yeah. I think it's just a temporary temporary resolution to keep us more connected, you yeah. know. So um, even even with working out, sometimes I, I get frustrated if I'm doing like a live workout with people, and then it glitches, and I'm like all into it, and then I gotta stop for like you know two minutes. <laughs> so there, screen comes back. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, it's there. Thankfully, it's there. I mean, mm -hmm. to go through something like this, we're at least blessed enough to have this, which we wouldn't have had, you know. 25 years ago we would have been even more disconnected yeah but, exactly yeah so how are you doing wow. <laughs> <laughs> did you say how are you doing <laughs> I, how are you going through all this <laughs> I, I mean i have two children as well so i mean you have two three have two. Two. two okay yeah no one is um nine months and one is okay. about to turn three so, oh, wow. um, and then my husband, and then I have, my mom thankfully lives down the street from me and just comes over every day. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, you know, we've been kind of trying to just get through, um, you know, with, with what's random of, you know, daycare is closing and then coming back online and us not putting her back in daycare and then th being thankful because people came down with the virus of the daycare anyway. So they oh, shut wow. down. I mean, so we've, we've been through that like high and low of like, how are we doing it? Um, but for me, I look at online as like, you know, it's a, a necessary means to an end at this point. Um, just like you were saying, you know, it's a temporary fix for some things and it has kind of sprung up a few other things like you're talking about just conversations um i was watching um uh, uh, uh ig live thing last night um and it was a conversation about power power plays in the dance industry and and how people you know choreographers or you know creative directors might use their powerful position to um you know get what they want and things like that and the struggle was about rates and, you know, young people coming in and not really understanding, like, you know, we've been working for these rates for a long time. Um, and, and one of the topics that came up was people needed to be educated before they get in. And I thought, you know, gosh, with all of what's happening online, I'm hoping, you know, the, the young people that are going to these dance conventions and, um, you know, that maybe the, the Q&A talks that they have 
um, either online or as part of the conventions, will start to teach business 101, you know, um, instead of just the typical questions that parents and, and, and kids are asking, like, how do I make it into a music video? Or how do I get, you know, picked from an, an audition? It's more like, you know, steering the kids to the questions of how do you file your own taxes? <laughs> and, you know, and how do you start your own, you know, LLC, or, you know, how to make sure that you don't take work that you should be paid for instead of you know, being paid pizza, you know, whatever, like, um, steering the, <laughs> trust me, I, I, I have danced and I've been fed the pizza and been like, that's great. It's on my resume. You know, but that was like way back in the day, you know, cause you think I just need to get on. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so I, I, I'm hoping that the internet portion that we're like turning up the volume on is really a matter of the education side, because we all want to get back in the studio yeah. and we all want to be with each other. But the, other, the education side where people can watch, you know, a little video or watch a little Q&A, people can turn that on and just, you know, while they're in the subway or, well, not in the subway, but, <laughs> but right. somewhere, you know, trans, yeah. transferring their, their, their position. And so I, I'm hoping that the Gen Z, you know, generation is so hit to that TikTok that they're looking at the TikToks that are talking about, you know, what they need to know. Uh. <laughs> I have, I have like, you know, my daughter is 13, uh -huh. my other one's nine. And so um, we had to get rid of, well, the nine-year-old is banned from her phone right now. <laughs> the 13-year-old, uh, we took the tick, we took TikTok and Instagram off mm -hmm. completely. Um, because, I mean, like, one of my, the nine-year-old, one of her friends, I discovered it looking at her TikTok it had her sexual preference at nine years old on her profile. And I was like, first of all, I don't think she really understands that. But the other thing was, is, you know, I was like, nobody's, nobody's checking her profile, you know, like, uh, and then there's, you know, she's nine and she mm -hmm. is adorable, cute little, like she's almost toddler size. She's just real petite little girl. Mm -hmm. um, like, man, this is very scary. Um, and so I called her dad and I was like, Hey, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, you know? So, um, I, right now I think TikTok, uh, I'm be honest to me, it's, it's a dangerous platform for little kids, but, yeah. um, I mean, yeah, there's all fun and games and some of it, you know, I, we had, we had a family profile and I actually took it down. Like, um, oh. yeah, I took it down. I took it completely down. I'm just hearing too much about yeah. the, that, you know, just, safety and privacy and all kinds of different things. So I was just like, ah, I don't really need it. You know, let me take it down. But well, um, a lot of people are spreading themselves over so many platforms that you don't really need it. You know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's fun. It's fun, but um, it can be another distraction. But I think for young kids, they don't understand the predators and the weirdos out there. So, um, and there's people private messaging them. I like it's, I've found one, like, as soon as we uh, come on and put up a profile on some other, like, sort of TikTok type app. Yeah. And within two minutes, she already had a private message. And I was like, uh-uh, no. Mm -mm. And so I took that down real fast. So it's just, it's, there's just a lot of weirdos out there. But, um, you know, I feel like education is so important. It's so, like, I moved here in 97. So I, I came when there was still the huge big budget videos. You know, where you had like 40 to 50 dancers. So, like, <laughs> remember the time Michael Jackson with like 60 dancers in the video? <laughs> yeah, I, I came a little after that. But yeah, yeah. It was during that, during that, like, uh, I would think, I think like Britney and Fresh Prince and New Kids on the Block and, you know, all those, are. yeah, those kinds of videos mm -hmm. uh, where, and then Aaliyah, you know, like when mm -hmm. they had the huge video budgets. And so I moved here during that time. Um, and even back then, you know, that was way before any of it was unionized or there was any kind of pay into your health insurance. Or, like, I'm so grateful that people fought so hard to make that happen um, because, you know, it never pay. I never paid into any health insurance with all that work I did. So it, it, it and it's still to me uh, behind in the sense of what dancers are able to get. But thankfully, Dancers Alliance is working hard, you know, um, you know, and then you go across the country, it depends on how they view dance and the ability to make a living off of dance. Like in certain parts of the United States, you go and you ask for your rate and they're like, why are you asking for that much? You're like, do you not understand? You know, like, do you not understand <laughs> what 
for a living. You know, like yeah. I can't fly to, uh, you know, Texas and and fly in and make two hundred fifty dollars to be there for five days. You know what I mean? Like it's you know mm -hmm. it's so it's a matter of people valuing what we do, but a lot of people don't. We don't have the same standard. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very challenging. Like, and even different studio heads don't have the same standards. So um, the education part is extremely necessary. It's just a matter of people getting on board so that we can have one higher standard. You know what I mean? And that's been the challenge the whole time, right? Like, yeah. you know, I've done a lot of jobs too, not mm -hmm. getting paid what I'm supposed to. Oh, it's for my resume. But like, I'm going to tell you now, like, I, you know, 20 something years later, none of that stuff really paid off like <laughs> in i mean unless that first job was for beyonce and you yeah. were for my resume you're like right and then beyonce <laughs> no business asking anybody to do anything for free right right right, <laughs> right? so exactly like, so yeah like it's just and they'll you know they really will try to get away with it so um yeah it, it's like even with the social issues it's like you can have all the education out there for people, but if they don't want to learn, they're not going to go to the sources to learn. That's true. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's a matter of like, you go even with street dance <clears throat> and foundational dances, light locking and b-boying. Um, there's hot spots in the United States or it mostly I feel like overseas, they've mm -hmm. been able to transfer this integrity and this love and this passion for the foundation they're like it's almost like you don't know what you got till it's gone or you don't really know what you have in your hands so when they're overseas they're like grabbing it like sponges you know mm -hmm. they're like if the, if, a, if an og comes they are in class you yeah. know they know the importance of it here it's kind of like eh, it's like hot spots yeah where people really value that you know yeah. so uh, but it has something to do i feel like with the studio owners or the teachers of of passing on that importance you know so it's the same thing with the education on the business it's like mm -hmm. depending on who your studio owner is and i don't know if you've noticed but certain states and cities they're so competitive between each other like the studios mm -hmm. you have a special event and they're not trying to tell the other studio no <laughs> no <laughs> nope. like xyz choreographers coming in and no you know you it's a special thing you can't tell it yeah i've i've been at one of those studios yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you taught it one like that uh-huh yeah yeah so it's really it's, it's sad because you're like do you really really want your kids to grow and be educated <laughs> or you want to try to manipulate and control them you know so yeah you know but at least there's people putting the information out there and there's more people right. going so that's good yeah well I don't want to take too much of your time, but I definitely appreciate your point of view. Um, and, and I just know that this whole thing, I'm hoping it gets better before, you know, it gets worse <laughs> because I don't want it to get any worse. Um, yeah. because I, I feel like we do need each other. And, and for me, the, the, the upside of this is that I get to, you know, reach out to people like you that I haven't seen in a long time and at least say hi and know that you're doing well. Um, and, and be able to have your, um, opinion and expertise expressed in a way that, you know, people can learn from it, even when they're not trying to learn, they can just, you know, lend them, lend them here, <laughs> you know, so, um, I wish you nothing but the best. Have a great rest of your day and tell your family, Mwah, I hope you're doing really, really well. Okay. You too. Thank you so much. It was good yeah. talking. <laughs> Bye.